We are part of an enterprise called the Cross Brothers and we have four breeding stations down south of Targo. We're a finishing farm up in Canterbury. On an annual basis, per season we finish 15,000 lambs and anywhere between 1,200 to 1,800 cattle. To optimise our lamb performance on this farm, I like to use a combination of offering the right balance between feed quality and quantity, together with a decent animal health protocol and stockmanship or the mob management. Every feed type offers a certain strength at a certain type of year and for a particular stock class. So I have different types in my system that suit me in terms of going through the season to again optimise lamb and plant performance. We've got straight lucerns, we've got red clover with white clover, we've got fescues with clover, we've got brassica, summer rape for lambs. There is no one perfect mix for everything. I guess for me it all starts with um, monitoring and identifying where my needs are for certain times a year. Every feed type serves its purpose at for certain stages of your farm too. Like when I came in, there was everything was old pasture, so I had to do something to get high performance very quick. Where I've now I've done that for three years, I actually can slow down and go, right, let's now focus on long-term pastures that actually perform just as well. And I've achieved that by monitoring, because I now know that my fescues and clovers are performing very well, just as well against those costly high finishing mixes. When using all these different feed types on farm, it's, it's important I use uh, like a transition protocol around changing the diet of the animal. An example of transitioning that we do a lot, probably in summer, is lambs that will go from pasture to lucerne or summer brassica. The way I deal with that is I plan ahead of what paddock I'm gonna graze with the lambs and I'll try to grow some pasture in the neighboring paddocks. And I might put them on that new feed type for an hour and run them back off. Next day I'll do that for two hours, next day probably another two hours. It depends how your lambs react. They'll probably tell you the animal behaviour is quite interesting in that regard. And I guess when I become comfortable that the lambs are starting to have a, a feel for that feed and they, um, I'm comfortable that I'm not going to run into any animal health problems, I'll probably leave them on there for half a day and probably within seven to ten days they will be on that feed type permanent. You will find that some animals actually don't really go well with a certain feed type. Some animals just do not like something and they will not thrive on it, so why would I force them to eat that? Admittedly, certain times of year don't help. We've got a very challenging summer this year with a brassica, low sunshine, high nitrates, and the lambs are just not liking it. At some point you just have to graze it, I'm afraid, so yeah. It's finding that balance between what works practical and yeah, optimum performance. To get the best growth or performance out of my lambs, I would say that monitoring is the key thing for me. My whole farm management starts with monitoring and recording, and based on that I can draw my conclusions on what I've done and how my management has affected my animal performance or plant performance. And I base my decisions on what I'm seeing and what the animals and the plants are telling me. And it doesn't have to be crazy, you keep it simple, what works for you, you can get so much out of that. Don't have to run 500 lambs in to spend two hours. Just weigh a couple and see how they're doing. And it'll tell you something, because often you'd be surprised the amount of times we think, my God, they're doing well, look at those lambs. And you run them over the scales and it's so disappointing. But I'm in, you know, doing that every fortnight or three weeks. I'm in time to correct. But if I would have done that for three months, I would be very disappointed at the end. My target for lamb growth rates here is probably anywhere ideally between 250 and 500 grams a day. Although I've found in the last few years that I think sometimes you can be quite happy with 180 and I've learned to accept and interpret the climate and the, the conditions that are going on. For example, you might have had high rainfall, you've got low dry matter in your feet, there's not a lot of sunshine, uh, it's a bit colder and achieving 180 grams a day is actually not so bad at all. But in general, I'm quite pretty stocked with 450 grams a day.